Cloud gaming is finally here. Google Stadia and Microsoft xCloud have both landed in their own ways. Google overpromised and underdelivered on an ambitious full-scale Stadia launch that costs $130 just to get in the door. Meanwhile, Microsoft is rolling out xCloud for free as a preview, asking for feedback and adding features as it goes. Now that both of these streaming services are playable in the wild, it's time for a good old-fashioned showdown. Considering one service has launched and already disappointed its supporters, and the other is in beta and delivering on its claims, you can probably guess which one is going to come out looking better here. Not Stadia. Let's lay down some parameters. Most of the testing I've done has been on my home Wi-Fi network, which averages 30 to 40 megabits per second down and just under 10 megabits per second up. This is within the connectivity ranges that both Google and Microsoft recommend for high quality streams. Stadia runs on a handful of platforms, Pixel phones, tablets and laptops via the Chrome browser, and on specially updated Chromecast Ultras. It doesn't function over mobile data and the Stadia controller works wirelessly on the Chromecast. The gamepad has to be physically plugged in to all other devices for now. xCloud, meanwhile, runs on Android phones only and functions with Bluetooth controllers like the Xbox One wireless model. Stadia supports Bluetooth controllers on laptops, tablets, and phones as well. I'll get something out of the way now. Both services work surprisingly well. On my Wi-Fi network, I've streamed hours of Destiny 2, Hitman, Bloodstained, Mortal Kombat 11, and plenty of other games without major issues. Stadia and xCloud are far from perfect. They still stutter every now and then, and input lag remains a legitimate issue. But they're playable without frustration. They're proof that streaming video games can work in 2019. But a word of caution. Just because Stadia and xCloud work well enough for me, that doesn't mean they'll work for you. As we've covered in previous videos, all of this is highly dependent on your own Wi-Fi situation, and individual results will vary. However, for a one-to-one -one comparison, it's fine to use a single home network as a baseline. So how do the services stack up against each other? To find out, we've determined five points of interest. Data usage, resolution and frame rate, latency, game library, and price. Let's dive in. First up, data. Google's big claim is the ability to stream games in 4K with HDR at 60 frames per second on supported platforms. Put a pin in that. And in this effort, Stadia gobbles up a lot of data. The company says Stadia will use between 4.5 and 20 gigabytes of data per hour, and this is playing out in the real world. Early players are reporting figures on the higher end of Google's estimate, largely in the range of 15 to 20 gigabytes per hour. This makes sense, especially for early adopters with solid Wi-Fi connections and 4K capable televisions. Stadia automatically feeds in the highest possible game quality given a player's network, though there is an option to lock resolution at 720p. On the other hand, Microsoft doesn't offer concrete data estimates for xCloud. However, preview players are reporting just under 3 gigabytes of data per hour. Of course, this might have something to do with the resolution of Microsoft's streams, which are capped at a lower quality than Google's. Which brings us to resolution and frame rate. Let's take the pin out of that 4K conversation and start with Stadia again. Google has been screaming about Stadia's ability to handle 4K streams with HDR at 60 frames per second since day one. Stadia boss Phil Harrison even said just a month before launch day that all games on the service would support 4K and 60 frames per second. So it was a surprise to players when they discovered two of the highest profile titles on Google's list, Destiny 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2, weren't actually streaming in 4K. Both of these games are upscaled on Stadia, Destiny from 1080p and Red Dead from 1440p. Red Dead is locked at 30 frames per second, while Destiny 2 hits 60 frames per second, which is actually higher than the console version of the game. Stadia can stream games at 4K and 60 frames per second, and it proves this feat with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, arguably the prettiest and smoothest game on the service. Microsoft doesn't make any 4K claims with xCloud, at least not yet. Since the service runs on mobile devices only for now, 4K isn't even the objective. Microsoft confirmed to Engadget that xCloud games max out at 720p and 60 frames per second. 
The company said the frame rate of individual games will mirror the title's performance on Xbox One S. Next up, latency. This one is a little trickier to judge, but I can confirm off the bat that both services suffer from higher levels of input lag than their hardware-based counterparts. It's not terrible in most instances, though it takes a second at the start of each game to find your button-pressing rhythm. Again, even though xCloud and Stadia function well enough, I wouldn't view streaming as a platform for competitive gaming just yet. Early tests see Stadia games with input latency of 100 to 220 milliseconds. That's about 50 milliseconds higher than the Xbox One X versions of these titles. It's harder to pinpoint specific input lag figures for xCloud, but I can tell you how it feels. On average, xCloud is slightly more sluggish than Stadia, and input latency feels a little more extreme. This is true across a range of games, from shooters to top-down strategy titles. And now, for the games. Google is a relative newcomer to the gaming industry, and it's essentially building relationships with developers from scratch. The company hired former Xbox and Sony executive Phil Harrison to lead Stadia, and it brought on legendary Assassin's Creed producer Jade Raymond to cultivate partnerships with fresh and new studios. But still, it's starting from a clean slate. That said, Stadia has 22 games at launch, with one exclusive, Guilt by Tequila Works. Meanwhile, Microsoft has been buying studios and partnering with developers of all sizes for years, and it has a lineup of franchises ready to be unleashed on the streaming age. In preview, xCloud already supports 53 titles, with a handful of exclusives like Gears 5, Sea of Thieves, Halo 5, and Forza Horizon 4. But how much do all of these games and streaming features cost? Our final category is price. Stadia is the only service here that's actually launched in full, and it's doing so with a convoluted pricing model. Right now, if you want to try Stadia, it'll be $130 for the Premier Edition, which comes with a branded controller. On top of that, it's $10 a month for Stadia Pro, a subscription service that provides access to 4K streams and includes discounts on games in the store. Plus, Pro players will get one free game a month, similar to Xbox Live Gold or PS Plus. In the future, Stadia will be accessible for free, though you'll have to purchase games at full price and streams will be capped at 1080p. Microsoft hasn't announced a complete pricing model for xCloud, but it recently revealed the service's next steps. Once it leaves preview, Xbox Game Pass members will be able to stream Xbox games that they own from the cloud. This is a half step toward opening up xCloud in full to a broader audience. Xbox Game Pass is a monthly $15 subscription service that combines Xbox Live Gold and access to a library of downloadable games at no extra charge. Microsoft has been successfully running gaming subscription services for years, and it's likely to continue this model with xCloud. But for now, xCloud and all of its games are free to preview players. On the surface, xCloud and Stadia are two functional cloud gaming services that offer different types of experiences. As it stands, xCloud is for Android owners and Microsoft fans, while Stadia is for folks with high data allowances who want to play gaming's greatest hits on 4K TVs. The biggest hurdle for either service lies in messaging. The Stadia launch has been largely underwhelming because Google promised too much too soon. Saying all games would play at 4K and 60 frames per second only set players up for disappointment when their favorite titles played in upscaled 4K instead. Streaming a game as vast and detailed as Red Dead Redemption 2 at this quality is truly an accomplishment, but compared with Google's stated 4K goals, the experience falls short. Microsoft, meanwhile, is streaming games at 720p to a limited pool of devices, and xCloud feels like a success. This isn't necessarily because it functions better than Stadia. In fact, it's slightly more sluggish and less pretty. It's because Microsoft isn't dangling a 4K carrot in front of its early players. It's taking things slow and steady, and we all know how that race turns out. For all the latest and greatest gaming news, subscribe and stay tuned to Engadget.com.